it's the college football playoff. It just seems so long ago with everything that's happened in the last two days that Bama did beat Cincinnati 27 to 6. Desmond Ritter, <clears throat> wow, I'm, I'm dying. Desmond Ritter was not fantastic. A lot of Cincinnati fought hard. And I hate doing this to Bama fans, you know, congratulations, but for what? Because they chirped and they chirped and they blew everyone's house down about how we beat Cincinnati 27 to 6? Aaron, this game was closer than Bama fans even. Like, they're up 17 to 6, and I'm watching the third quarter and in the stands, and they're like almost on the edge of their seat. Like, they're not cheering. They're like scared to death. And they had it on my arm length really the entire way. Did this 21-point loss help the Boise State's UCFs and others? Because it looked so, like it did. So, first of all, I just kind of want to shoot you down here for a second because you can't go into this argument. It, this is the exact argument the Blue Bloods are saying. We don't play you guys because if we win, we're supposed to win. And if we lose, it's all hell breaking loose for us. And I know you wanted to start saying it. Oh, you beat Cincinnati. whoop de freaking do You only beat a bunch of – nope. They beat a good team that was deserving to play. Alabama did not walk in there expecting them to just roll over and die. And, yes, the score the score was closer than I think a lot of Bama fans indicated. But, you know, the, the G5 and the guys, you know, the underdog, you know, people who root for the underdog, they got what they wanted. And the game, yes, it, you know, it, would, it was unfortunate they didn't get a little bit more offense there. But – uh, you can't you can't come in here and and, pl- and play right into the narrative of well if they win then look at uh, you know look at Alabama fall and you know if they lose well you you know you you know it's Cincinnati come on man let's uh, act like you but no it, it it was a great game Alabama played their tail off they won they they that's all they had to do was win by one point that's all they needed to do but yes to answer your question I do believe that this helped a lot of teams like Boise like Cincy like UCF and others say look. You know, there's going to be years where a team might be better than Cincy, you know, a G5 team. And these are the arguments, actually, and I will talk about it with Michigan here as well. These are the arguments that I actually believe that I can argue, I can use in favor of expansion. And you say, well, you know, they still got beat by three touchdowns. But I would expand the playoffs simply for the fact that did you not see all those New Year's Six Bowls that we had that were competitive and fun? Imagine if those were playoff games. Yeah. But I understand we might still get Alabama and Georgia, and that's fine. If that's the way you want to crown a champion, I'm totally fine. But expanding to 12 teams and letting Cincinnati's and Michigan's and Ohio State's and Utah's and, and Ole Miss's and Baylor's. And, I mean, could you imagine if all imagine the intensity if all those were, were playoff games as well? It would have been incredible. And yeah, the, the Utah backup quarterback might have had a lot bigger story instead of just, oh, I won the Rose Bowl. Whoop de doo. Well, he didn't, but he almost did. But, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I mean. I was like, wow, like this is a Rose Bowl game. And I was like, yeah, it's a Rose Bowl. But yeah, I mean, imagine not only that, and I know we're going to talk about this later in the segment. These Some of these guys aren't opting out. They're playing playoff games. Yeah, that's was surprising to me. That's my argument. If the NCAA doesn't want to turn into a complete black hole of nothingness, make these playoff games. Expand the playoffs. Make this a true 12-team playoff and make your – Make your January, December 31st and January bowl games relevant again. But back to the initial game, I, I'd like to think it helped, but this might have been too big of a spread where the Blue Bloods are going to say, look, we can still stomp on you if we need to. 17-6 hmm. to six would have made a better a better, uh, a better, better argument. If it would have yeah, but there. here's my thing, okay? I want to get you my, my two tweets that I had that I thought were pretty good. I'm sorry. I'm just myself here. Um. I refuse to believe that if Bama won 63-7, to that the chirping wouldn't be louder and also include an I told you so. And it rightfully should be. See, which is which what I'm saying, but like, the, but they didn't since he hung around, period. Mm-hmm. So give him credit. We all knew in our heart of hearts that they'd lose. But they fought hard, and they could have won. Um, for year, And here's my, my, my stopping point here. For years, Bama would win sexy. Big wins matter. Because they aren't as special this season, then that means it's no longer means anything to beat bad teams by 50 or, uh, you know, lower tier teams by 50. Because I want, I want Tide fans to keep that in mind. 
for years they created the narrative of, of win sexy pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like in college football, man, why do you guys get ranked so high? Because you beat the bad guys by a ton of points. So why does it not matter now? Well, because they're already in the playoff now. It doesn't matter now. They've been inserted in the playoff. We don't we don't crown the CFP champion on sexy style points now. I mean, you look at it. I mean, I know, like yes. I said, we haven't we haven't gotten to Georgia yet, but Georgia's the favorite going into this game. Oh, that's dumb. Georgia's the betting favorite going into this game, and maybe that was because of what happened on the field. I don't know. Again, Vegas and setting the lines isn't just, you know, it, there's so many factors than just, you know, who do you think on paper is the better team? There's so many factors going into play. But, again, I, I think if Cincinnati covers the spread, we have a whole different conversation, even if they lose. This 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 margin of victory is just a little bit outside the realm of Cincinnati and the G5s and the lower tiers being able to say, hey, look, man, we still – I think they still belong. I do personally. But it's, uh, it's not about exactly what I think. Like, Notre Dame has gone in there. Clemson has gone in there. Other teams, Washington has gone in there and gotten dusted off far worse than this. That's my, my point. My, argu- my argument was always – Yes, Cincinnati may go in there and get dusted. Yes, UCF may get, go in there and get their doors blown in. But they deserve the right to go in there. And that's a fair point. But to me, again, I I don't want to take anything away from like from Cincinnati. And I feel like people, people are using this to like, oh, well, maybe one won by 21. No, no, no. This was a 17 assist game for a long time until that last whatever touchdown. Right. And I don't believe that we should just – because they got that touchdown and that field goal with that. No, Cincinnati was going to lose this game for three quarters, but they were hanging around. If Bama screwed up, then then it'd be a battle. But see, Cincinnati couldn't get anything going either. Just- so I think it was – when I the way I watched this game was, as I watched it, I saw Ritter and Ford, and the Cincinnati offense couldn't get anything. So I think UCF at- wins that game. I don't know. I don't want to play that game. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to play that what if game. It's possible with Mackenzie Milton. Absolutely. I'm not. I mean, that defense in 2017 was phenomenal until like, except for like one or two games. But the situation that that what I'm talking about here is that like when I watched that game, it never seemed like Cincinnati was ever going to be able to just turn it on on offense. Oh, I and know. Really, the talent and the depth, and you know, mostly the talent, obviously, of Brian Young or Brian Robinson and Bryce Young. Just overpowered them, and that's okay. Like I, like I said, you, like you said, most people, but even based on the number, didn't expect Cincinnati to walk in there and pull off the David beating Goliath. If it happened, oh my goodness! But <laughs> no one expected it. But at the same token, Alabama fans are still allowed to celebrate. I mean, they're still allowed to celebrate this this victory. I mean, they are still competing for another national title. And I'll say one last thing on this. I mean, you can you can too. The randos of the world are still talking. Oh, we got it. Oh, we proved. No, you didn't prove anything. You proved me right, if anything. You, you, you let this team hang around, and they shouldn't have been hanging around with how bad they were on offense. And they hung around. They absolutely hung around. And I think, what, I think what I took away from this game was that there are going to be G5, because recruiting and college football is so cyclical. Now, the NIL might put a wrinkle in this. I don't know. We'll see. But, like, teams like UCF, they're going to the Big 12. Like, look, let's take the ACC, for example. Let's say Pitt went undefeated in the ACC. Were we putting them in the playoff? That's my point. He's like, Bama got in by default, and they lost the game. But what if, but like, I don't like what ifs and what ifs, but, like, there's an argument that Bama could not, should not have been in there even if they did beat Georgia. I uh, mean, you, you, win the SEC, you win the SEC title, you're in. Uh, I'm sorry, you just are. I feel like it's the way they beat Georgia. I think even if they beat them by one point, they're still in the playoff. They just but why? Just because it's the SEC. Yes, the That's, SEC is. That... Unfortunately, the SEC has proven time and time again that while they may not be a superior overall conference, they do have superior teams. Whether or not we agree with that, whether or not we are, you know, you accept that or not, they do. I mean, look at there was a there was a decade where they rattled off like nine of the ten national champions. Which is fine, but I guess my biggest complaint with the SEC thing is now is college football is so year to year basis. Why does SEC get the default train? If if because technically college football, college basketball are like pretty much 
this year's good, this year's bad, this year. They're this polar year, this opposites year. of it. I one hundred percent agree with you, and that's right. where I think the argument is. If the argument isn't well, G five should get in over a second SEC team. The argument is for expansion because hey, if the ACC goes undefeated, if the Pac twelve goes undefeated, if the American Conference, the Mountain West, if we go undefeated, we should have the opportunity to play for a championship. We might go I mean, in there and get the brakes beaten off of us, but we should have it. Because in college basketball, if I go undefeated or if I win my conference, I can go play for a national title. That's the argument from G5. And another thing is, oh, Cody Jansen said it best. If this was, a let's say, a round of 64, which is never going to happen, Cody. No, that's too unless much. We're in, unless we're in the year 3000. But if Cody said this was a round of 64, both these teams would, lose, would not even make it to the championship, and I agree with him. I don't yeah, even know if, Alabama, if this Alabama team or the Cincinnati teams makes it that far. Maybe, maybe not. That's the thing. Like, my philosophy is twelve to sixteen teams make, and it's and you you, you know you talk about college football. I know we spend a lot on this, and I'll move on. But I don't care. <laughs> you know, we we look at a situation where the the NCAA and the college football playoff all they care about is money. Make yep. these games playoff games, and you have players who don't opt out, and you have more money. No one is going to the Popeyes Chicken Bahamas Bowl, and no <laughs> one's watching it. No offense, but no one's watching it. Oh, I mean, look—you you canceled four bowls and nobody batted an eye. That's bad. They might have lost money more. Can you imagine how much they gained compared to what they lost this year? I'm sure there's a lot of insurance policies taken out. Woo! All right, college football playoff again. Georgia beat Michigan, setting up the rematch. Fire. Um, Aaron. I know I picked Georgia my seven and a half, but I mean, good lord. This game was, was competitive. I mean, what I tell you? They can't run the ball. They're going to get destroyed. Yeah. And what um, happened? They couldn't run the ball. They got destroyed, and here we are. I have a question. Um, Is this a good season for Jim Harbaugh or not good enough? That's absolutely a good season. I mean, he finally got the monkey off his back with Ohio State, mm -hmm. and he got into the playoff, which is what they hired. They basically, this is what they hired him to do. Now, of course, they would love for him to win a national title eventually, and I'm sure if this became the norm for Michigan – you know, Wolverine fans would then be like, well, this guy can't win a title. Let's go get somebody else. Again, I've said this. I've beat this drum. Who are you going to get that's better? You gonna right. go get, you're going to go get Urban Meyer? Are you really going to go get Urban Meyer? And is that really going to matter? I mean, it could. I Maybe. mean, the, the point being is, is that, like, I mean, Jim Harbaugh is one of the top five coaches in, in college football. And he might even have moved up a little bit with Brian Kelly moving away from Notre Dame. I think Brian Kelly and LSU is going to be a match made in hell. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, agree. I think this is absolutely a successful season. It had been, what, six years? He hadn't beat Ohio State, and he wasn't even getting close to Ohio State. There was a lot of times he was getting destroyed. So, yeah, this is absolutely a successful season for Michigan and Jim Harbaugh. I don't want to make this joke. Oh, well, first, before I make the joke, Aaron, based on Friday's games, who's better right now? Before you can give me your lean, Georgia or Bama, based on the, based on those games. Just based on the two games and nothing else. Yes, I think Georgia by a mile, but that's just based on Friday. I don't know. Both teams played well. Bama, oh. show, Bama showed that, and this is what happened. This is what again. I can't use the rest of the year, but this is what happened. Georgia was never tested. Even in this game, they were never tested. And <laughs> Alabama, Alabama had somewhat of a test. Like you said, the game was close. People thought there's a chance Cincinnati can get back in this. <sighs> Which we know wasn't true, but yeah. I would give the slight edge to Georgia. Just, wow. But it's not it's not Miles. No, absolutely mm. not. I say a mile. I didn't say Miles. I said a mile. Whatever, mile. It's it's I think it's exactly like a field goal, maybe. Oh. Even though Michigan was pretty was a lot better than Cincinnati, if I had to put a number on them, I'd, I'd pick Michigan. Why? Because they scored five more points? I don't think they were better. I no, don't... I I think in Michigan, if I put Michigan against Cincinnati, I think Michigan beats them too. Mm, yeah, probably. Probably. 